if you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or any cheap PC games, use the referral link in the description. It will take you over to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods. And if you use the code CHEZ at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 26 of season 3 here at Chelsea. We are very nearly at the end of this third year. We don't have many games left. Six to go in the BPL. We also have a second leg in the Champions League quarterfinals to play today, as you can see here. Uh, we are at home in the second leg, obviously. Man City versus Monaco is the other game. City away from home. I didn't even know you could do this. Press Y on a, on a, on a particular date and see what fixes were available. Someone told me about it on uh, on in the comment section of the previous episode. I had absolutely no idea. Career mode YouTuber OP, me. I'm the best ever. Don't even know that you could do that. Aston Villa first, though, followed by that second leg against Juve, which we need a win from. And then we've got Southampton to round things out. All three games are at home. So hopefully six points in the league and a win in the Champions League too. Time will tell whether we can actually get that. We are nine points clear at the top of the Barclays Premier League table with six games to go. So if we get two wins today uh, against Villa and Southampton, then we surely must be massive, massive odds on favourites to uh, to win the league. We all probably already are massive odds on favourites to win the league with a nine point gap with six games remaining. But our goal difference is vastly superior to anyone else as well. Scored more than anyone else, conceded less than anyone else. It's been a very successful season here, which... To be fair, it should it should be with the the quality of player that we have in our starting lineup. But if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you drop the video a thumbs up rating, subscribe to the channel as well. If you haven't to this point, we are getting closer and closer and closer to 140k. Would love to hit that by the end of the weekend, perhaps as you see this on Thursday afternoon. But for now, we'll jump into this game against Aston Villa and see how we get on. Oxley Chamberlain into Nathan. There's so much space for Kennedy out wide. We'll get it out to him as quickly as we possibly can. Try and drop the shoulder on Leandro Bakuna. He's not to be fooled by that though. Dave, not Dave. Gaia is there in support. Dave's on the other side. Dave's playing at right back. Quickly through that gap. That was meant for uh, Ruben Loftus cheek, but Traore comes away with it. We'll try and get the turn in. He's on his left foot. He scored a banger against. Oh. He scored a banger in the last episode right to the top corner against West Brom, but couldn't replicate that there unfortunately that's the first chance of the game though he's somehow going to find up wind up with the ball at his feet again just showing some strength there to hold off the attentions of the defender cross comes in Birch and Traore can't get there Jules Okore heads it clear and finally Villa are going to clear their defensive lines it's a lofty ball over the top looking for the runner Scott Sinclair He's brought it down well and he's just twisting one way then the other to get away from me. Oh, Jordan, you don't. That would have been a disgusting goal of that if that had gone into the back of the net. Ridiculous. If he'd have flicked that over and then buried it in the bottom corner, I would have been able to do nothing but applaud. Unfortunately for him, it didn't go anywhere near the back of the net because Santoso came out and caught it. But Jordan Vera too might be able to set up a secondary uh, effort here for Aston Villa. Scott Sinclair it is Vera too that has the shot and again, very well held by Santoso. Get it to the Ox. Bertrand Troy trying to keep himself on side, but we'll look to Kennedy first. Try to step over to turn inside the man and look for Oxley Chamberlain, who's in the box here. Oh, tackles the man rather than uh, just taking the ball in his stride. Ruben off his cheek. Bertrand Troy, oh, why would you try the overhead kick there? Just head it in, mate. And then falls over the defender, all right, as if to compound his misery or my misery. Kennedy cuts that out and runs straight into Victor Moses. Vera 2 gets it down really well actually and Idrissa Gunner Gay is going to try and get around the outside but we're not going to let him we're going to try and catch him on a counter here there's so much space for Bertrand Troyer to run into here can't quite take it in his stride the way I wanted him to but we'll try and play that around the corner it would have been brilliant if it had found Alex oxlade Chamberlain. Bertrand Troyer is still going but fires his shot straight at Roberto if that ball ran the inside the defender had reached Alex oxlade Chamberlain and he'd buried it in the bottom corner that would have been one of the best goals that we've scored all season but unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Nathan wins that header, though, and that wasn't to be either. Roberto right behind it. The return of Willian. He's back from his three-month injury, coming on here to replace Nathan in the cam spot. With ten minutes to go, I'm going to need him to put in a performance as well, if he can, because we are still at nil-nil here, locked goalless, as Aston Villa have put in a very good defensive performance to keep us out to this point. As people try and get that through the gap again to Oxlade Chamberlain, who gets past the man and then swings and misses at the shot, went down. I thought he was going to roll around and then stay injured actually for a minute, but it's good to see William back just in time to help us cross the line with regards the uh, BPL and hopefully the Champions League too, if uh, he might be able to 
have some sort of impact on the game against Juve in a few days' time, but it's been a ridiculously difficult second half. I haven't been able to break Villa down at all. They've just been so very defensive. The, defend, the full back four and then at least one midfielder has just been sat on the edge of their box, and they've been doing this as well for a while, and it's so very difficult to actually get the ball off them when they do that. Hopefully, we'll be able to create at least one more clear-cut opportunity before the end of the game. If not, it looks like it's going to be a goalless nil-nil unless Kozak can bury something in the bottom corner here. But talking of corners, that's where he's going to go and try and hold it. Keep that in. Well done. Villa are determined to get a nil-nil draw here. They do not want to push forward at all. We'll take the advantage there, and the Ox will find Willian. We'll try and go one way, then the other. You see how defensive Villa are. Look at the amount of people back here on the edge of the box. Willian, what a run. What a run. Surely not. Willian! No! Oh, <laughs> how good would that have been if he'd have just sprinted around four or five different people and then buried it in the bottom corner? Great save. This is going to be the last chance then. Corner comes in. Up goes Dom Solanke. It's straight at Roberto, the Spanish goalkeeper. Well held. Comfortable save. And it looks like, unless we can get something right now, practically the last kick of the game, which we're not going to do because Oxley Tamer has been tackled and it's going to be a nil-nil draw against Aston Villa at home, unfortunately. Not the result we were after, but still keeps our uh, league campaign ticking over. One of the substitutes seems delighted that we got a nil-nil draw. Not really too sure why. That Roberto save was, uh, well, you can see, uh, not many chances in the game whatsoever. Only one for Villa. But we push forward into the game against Juventus, hoping to make the difference in the Champions League. Right. Juventus at home. We're 1-0 down from the first leg, so we need any win to nil or a win by two goals. Because obviously any win that... Or if we only win by one goal and Juve scores, so like 2-1, 3-2, 4-3, etc. Juve will go through on away goal. So we need any win to nil or a win by two goals here against Juventus. It's a strong starting eleven from them again. And this is going to be one of the most difficult games we've played so far this year but it was the same for the Bayern second leg and we were able to turn that one around so we'll try and do the same again here Zukic to Marquisio they all makes the tackle though we'll give it to Pogba quickly to James could go back to Pogba here actually and now Alexandro is out of position Bamiang's there down the line just going to try and fight actually we might go for a switch and if Alaba can quickly get this to Neymar which he has been able to do and Neymar can drive inside we might be able to get a shot off Still going, Neymar. And there's the shot. Oh, Nato with a save. He made two or three absolutely stunning saves in the first leg, Nato. Of course, it was Neymar that got us one goal against Bayern. And Neymar comes close to a goal here again for the second time in just 60 seconds. Unfortunately, though, that header was quite a way off target. Free kick for Juve in a really good position. If they get this on target, it's probably going to go in. Marquisio takes. It's off the bar. Wow, that's the closest we've come to a goal so far for either side. Oh, to Matic, it was meant for Hammers, but put it through the gap to Alba, into Hammers. I could look for Alba again, but they're defending really well here, Juve. I just can't find the space to get a shot off. Alba might, though, if we can just open up those legs, but Nato makes the save. Still nil-nil. We're still very much in with a chance of getting through in this one. Hammers with the corner. Ah, it's not the best. Alexandro gets it away. Only as far as Nathaniel Klein through that gap into Paul Pogba against his former team. Paul Pogba, yes, finds the back of the net. 1-1 on aggregate. 1-0 on the night. On the brink of half-time. Perfect time to score. If that demoralises them for the second half, we may be able to uh, push forward in the second and get ourselves in front in the tie as a whole. 1-0 on the night. We do need any win to nil to guarantee at least staying in the competition. 1-0 kick puts us to extra time and is the only score with which we can go to extra time. What a finish though. And if we can get another, we're through. Pogba to Hammers to Neymar. Oh, it takes an ace to get... Uh, is that a foul, ref? I think you'll find it is. He just threw him to the ground. Right, can Bale give us the perfect start to the second half? We had the perfect end to the first. Almost the perfect start to the second. That one was deflected down. Bale. Hamis, Matic could make the run forward. Neymar is in so much space over here. Going to try and commit the defender as well, which we've done well. Get it to Alba. Alba, he loves a cheeky finesse, but Panucci with a ridiculously good tackle. That surely was going to be 2-0 and put us right in the driving seat for the rest of this tie. But 
a tackle out of nowhere, and now they may end up scoring at the other end. Pereira versus Alaba. Pereira with a cross. There's a man at the back post. It's Sami Kadira. He can't bring it down properly. We've just got to shepherd him away from goal, which we've done really well. Alexandro on the ball now. I can't get it back off them, though. Crosses in, but oh, Courtois gets it. Simone Zaza ends up in the back of the net, but thankfully the ball didn't. Oh, Marquisio's given that straight to William. Uh, they may have just hit the self-destruct button here. Uh, Alba's in behind. If I can beat Stefan Lichsteiner. Alba to make it 2-1. What have they done? Juve have given us a, a route into the semi-finals of the Champions League. I didn't look likely to score a second inside 90 minutes, but Marquisio, I think it was, gave it straight to William there. Into Alba as they'd push lots of bodies forward. Alba with just enough stamina left over Lichsteiner to be able to beat him with pace and turn inside and get away from him. Then it's a simple finesse finish. Chelsea 2, Juve 0 on the night. And as you can see at the bottom, 2-1 on aggregate as well. Now we just need to hold them off for another three minutes and we're into the semis. But drills that out to Bale, whose first touch actually gets it away from the defender. Marquisio, though, steals it back off him. But you can't pass it around at the back, lads. You need to get the ball up the other end. You need to score, otherwise you're going out. Although... I say that, Marquisio's got it, Alaba needs to get there and he hasn't, Pereira's in behind, Pereira, Courtois with a save and he misses Morata. Fine margins, the fine margins have decided this game. One mistake from Marquisio and then Courtois with the biggest save of his career to date at Chelsea. Wow, if they'd have scored with the last kick, I would have been devastated. Courtois saves and... Morata threw himself at it. He knew it was now or never, and he just couldn't get there. We cleared the ball away, and the final whistle goes. 2-0 on the night, 2-1 on aggregate. We're into the semis. Oh, let's try and get three points in the Premier League to round things out, shall we? That was a roller coaster. Thank you. Out to Kennedy. He's going to get there well. Oh, and he's beaten the defender all ends up. Dom Slanky needs to drop off, which he has done. Dom Slanky to make it 1-0. Deflected, I think, but into the bottom corner it goes. Perfect start, 1-0 after six minutes. We'll have a look at the replay. I'm pretty sure that took a deflection, which took it into the corner. I'm not sure how much of a deflection that was, because I was aiming for that corner anyway. We'll have a look. Oh, it's enough to put the goalkeeper off. You can't blame Fraser Forster for that. It's coming up height and then just... Arrows down into the ground. Never mind. Unfortunately for Fraser Forster, it's Chelsea 1, Southampton 0 very early on. Miami with the cross. And that's an equaliser already. Less than two minutes after we score, Saido Birahino wins a header to make it 1-1. All right, back to the drawing board. We'll, uh, we'll go again. <laughs> Fuck my life. To be fair, nice little ball around the outside. I don't know where Gaia is. Great cross, but... I mean, it was Dave, not a centre-back underneath it, and he just got caught right under the ball as well. Perfect header from uh, from Saido Berahino, though. 1-1. One, one. Solanke. Nathan. Oh, we've gone. he's gone for the return ball. Solanke. It's 2-1. What? 2-1 inside 11 minutes. We scored after six. They scored after eight. We've scored again after 11. What? Three goals. That's mad. Three goals already. It, who knows what the scoreline is going to be in this one if it keeps this up. He's having his shirt tugged there as well. It's a really good finish from Dom Solanke. Bertrand Traore picked up an injury against Aston Villa and he's out for three weeks, which is why Solanke starts. He's got two goals already. Out to Dave. Could drill this looking for Solanke or actually pull it back to Willian. We'll then cross it looking for Solanke and we'll take a corner. Can we get a third goal five minutes before the break? It's been nothing happened basically since uh, that second Solanke goal went in, but Forster stops us from scoring a third. Great corner from Willian. I see the man stood on the edge of the box. I'm actually just going to look to the near post to John Stones. If he can win this header, which he can't, Ryan Bertrand did, it's another corner. Uh, okay, I see him right on the far side of the box. We'll ping it to him. It's Ruben Loftus cheek. I've got to hit this first time. Probably shouldn't have hit that first time. I see around the corner, but. Callas holds him, holds him off well. I oh, see it could send through Dom Solanke here, who's got the pace, but Cedric's not the uh, the slowest. He's no slouch. Turn back, actually. We'll give it out wide to Kennedy, who on his left foot can put in a good cross. But Salit's underneath it, but it's gone out for a corner. Bertrand was the man that cleared the header. They've made a change, but I'm not sure whether it's going to be enough for them. John Stones wins that header. It's going to drop. It's still free. Fraser Forster picks it up. 
Oh, well, I have to play that to Pasalic on the edge of the box, don't I? There's so much room for him there. Takes it under control and will give it inside to uh, Thomas Callas. Callas, the centre-back. Fraser Forster with a save. Wow. Still trying to make it three. Pasalic. Willian gets caught on it. Dave misses the tackle. Forward to Wanmi, who's in the box, and surely 2-2. He's picked Leandro Damiao out perfectly at the back post, but I don't know where the defence was. I gave the ball away needlessly, and unfortunately it's cost us Southampton 2, Chelsea 2, with six minutes to go. Just going to get rid of this, and we're going to try and get ourselves back in front. Final whistle's gone, it's ended 2-2, a mistake from me, and uh, unfortunately it's only a draw in this one. We dominated, wow, Southampton, two shots... Two goals. Not good enough. Not good enough from me there, unfortunately. Arsenal Spurs, the North London derby, is the uh, the game up for them. Uh, presumably in the 5.30 kickoff if it's not been played yet. We have Leon in the Champions League semi-finals. Not the expected side, to be fair, for that stage of the competition. It's been, well, I don't even, I can't even remember the last time that Olympic Lyonnais were in the uh, semi-finals of the Champions League or the European Cup. But I'm not sure what the league table looks like now. We'll have a quick look to end things out because, of course, Arsenal are the team that are chasing us and a game against Tottenham is going to be difficult. Whether they can win it, I'm not sure. They did win when we drew against Villa, so the gap was down to seven and they drew against Tottenham because the gap is still seven. So the gap is seven points with four games to go. So there are 12 points available. So all we need is two wins from our last four games. And we'll be through. We'll be through. We'll win the Barclays Premier League. We have Swansea, West Ham, Watford and Stoke. And we need six points from those four games. I think we can do that. I think we can do that. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, uh, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't to this point to ensure you don't miss out on any further content. But for now, I'll see you next time.